Hey guys, welcome back to the Loose Transistor channel. Today, we're gonna talk about uh, something not quite quad related, but something that we use all the freaking time, soldering irons. Uh, just got this crazy soldering iron from Banggood. It is called the TS100, and it is a digital soldering station all-in-one type deal that is both, uh, that is DC powered and has digital control over the temperature. You can switch the tips, for different types of tips quite easily and it's just like an all around really neat little thing. I mean it's super small, you can remove the tip and uh, travel with it and it will just be a tiny little thing. Here I'll show you guys even. But I think the biggest selling point of this guy is that you can actually run it off something like a 4S LiPo pack. Uh, which out in the field when you're uh, trying to fix stuff would be quite useful because you won't really necessarily need an outlet. So just like that, you remove one screw and you can separate the tip. So if you were to travel, you could just do that and this will fit in your pocket and you're good to go. And if you have a 4S LiPo or a laptop uh, power supply, you're pretty much good to go as long as the power supply outputs at least, uh, I'd say 19 volts to get a good uh, working temperature out of this guy. So let's just slide this back in here. Boom, and let's get the screw back in there. So this guy also boasts being a programmable um, soldering iron, which allows you to change a few settings on it, like uh, how long it sleeps and that sort of thing, which I found to be quite neat, um, a quite neat feature, not something that I necessarily need, but it was cool. But one of the things that it was quite interesting is that it allows you to upload your own logo. Um, I'm not sure if it will be visible here to you guys, but I will try to show you. So when I plug it in, you should see my loose transistor popping up. Yeah, there we go. I don't know sure if you guys could actually see that or not. But uh, yeah, so we have it powered on right now. And uh, basically the way that it operates is you just have to press one of these buttons to take it out of, uh, of standby mode and start heating up the tip. So I'm gonna press it right now. Boom, here. And it's gonna go all the way up to 400, which is what I have it set to. So as you can see, it takes no time at all for the soldering iron to start getting to temperature. We're already like at 300 and pressed a button just a few seconds ago. And there we have it. So we're at 400 degrees. So if I were to just grab some solder right here, you can see that it works. Cool. Uh, so using these buttons here, we can actually change the temperature. So if I wanna it down a little bit and let's say we wanted to do 320 cool so we just let it sit there and there it goes it cools itself down to 320 and when it gets there it's gonna hold there it has a very very good holding uh, temperature like it holds pretty nicely it doesn't take long to get there and you can keep working pretty damn easily and there we have it there we go so now we have it just slightly cooled down a little bit still hot and good to go and if you're done working with it and you want to do something else, you can very easily just press the two buttons at the same time. I'm, I'm doing it awkwardly here so that you can see it on the screen, but boom. Oops, sorry. Press the two at the same time. Now we're in standby mode again. The tip will start cooling down on its own and you can just rest it somewhere and go about your business doing something else. When you're ready to, to rock again, you just press the button, pick it up, and you're good to go. The thing that I really like about this is that it's super light and it's very easy for you to, to use it and uh, it doesn't get, the wire is not super thick, doesn't get caught on stuff, so I find it like very, very, very easy to work with. So I have a little PDB here that I prepared for us to just uh, solder some stuff on and just, uh, you know, get, get a sense to see how this, uh, how the solder iron really works. I also have an XT60 here that will try soldering because this is one of the things that I have more of a pain in the ass trying to solder all the time is the XT60s. So uh, let's start with that actually. Let's start with the XT60. So I am in standby mode right here. I'm just going to put it down for a second. We're going to get the wire ready here and we'll solder an XT60 and see how it does. We have our wire, this is 12 gauge wire, so it's pretty thick wire. Slide, slide it into the XT60. Okay. 
just using the pincers to hold it upright like that because I forgot my uh, my jaws. And uh, hopefully you guys can see. Okay. So I'm gonna press the button here and let it come to temperature. And then we're gonna solder this XT60 and see how that goes. I apologize for the lovely music, but I am charging my lipos because I want to fly tomorrow. And that's my charger letting me know that I am closer to that. Okay, so we're at 320. Right, so I had set it to 320. I like to solder it hot. So I'm going to go all the way back up to 400. It's where I had it before. There we are. There we have it. That's not bad at all. Let's let it cool down for a little bit because it is still quite hot and uh, it's hurting my fingers. But I'll uh, I'll do a, a more thorough test on it in a second. So let's just take a quick look at that. So yeah, that's not bad at all, guys. Um, 400 degrees. It's not the cleanest solder I've ever done, but it looks really solid. Yep, feels pretty solid too. I just pulled on it and uh, it seems pretty good to me. That's too hot to touch right now. So I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. I'm not gonna worry about anything. This is just to test and to show you guys. So we have here our, our PDB, our fake PDB. So let's uh, tack on, first let's uh, see what we would do with a normal PDB and uh, tin, tin the pads first. And then we'll solder some stuff to them and uh, that should give us a pretty good demo of the abilities of the soldering iron. So look at that, I just press the button, we're already at temperature here, and actually I'm just gonna do that, because I don't care. So battery pad, I tin pretty quick. Nice, nice even solder. Let's tin this pad right here. Boom. It's a little bit much, but hey. And let's say like for an ESC pad or something like that, There we go, and I'm doing all this stuff here, guys, at 400 degrees. It's 400 degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna put it on standby again, and we're gonna just uh, get some wires ready to solder onto here. So I have a very thin gauge wire here for like a, like a video or something like that, so a very thin gauge wire. We're gonna do the battery wire too. So 12 gauge wire, got that. And then we have some ESC gauge wire, which this one here, I think it's 816. So 16. And then we have just these uh, JST leads. Uh, I don't have anything on the other end, but we're just gonna use the bottom here. Just stuff that I have in my scrap box. <clears throat> so first things first, I usually like to tin my wires, so uh, Let's get that set up. So I'm pressing the button. It's been sitting for a little bit. Yeah, how do I show you? There we go, 400 already, boom, done. So let's tin this wire and see how that goes. Just like that, we tend the wire. So we're pretty much ready to put it onto that little slot right there. Close. Now 
Now I probably could have put a little bit more solder on that, but what is important is the fact that the solder flowed really nicely and really easily all the way around. And I was able to put that really thick gauge wire on there like in no time. And this thing takes no time to heat up. So here we have, let's say, a very thin gauge wire here. And we're just going to tack it onto that little plus right there. Boom. Just like that. What else can we solder? Oh, yes. The Assis. Boom, just like that. Melts so nicely. Look at that. So there you have it. So in just a few seconds, we were able to solder all this stuff together and uh, and uh, the soldering iron kept up really, really, really nicely, especially when you consider how small of a package this thing really is. I mean, this is all there is to it. That, that's it. Uh, yes, you need a power supply or you need a 4S LiPo to make it work, but that's not necessarily a disadvantage. I mean, we all have four cell packs. You could really easily rig up yourself something where you have a barrel connector or something of this sort right here feeding from your battery and you'll be able to use this on the field anytime. Uh, this has actually become my main soldering iron. I have no other soldering iron that I'm using right now except for this guy right here. So if you're looking for something awesome, practical, not very expensive and uh, that fits really nicely in your pocket, check out the Banggood TS100. Um, very, very solid unit. I definitely, definitely do recommend. So thanks for watching guys. I'll have some more videos of you guys for you guys where I'll be using this uh, soldering iron and uh, my next video will be on how we can transform these giant uh, receivers from Radiolink into something a little bit more usable um, by deep pinning some stuff and just getting just a board and the antenna. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of this awesome content that I'm preparing for you guys. Uh, come back, check out some more videos. And as always, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.